In this video, we're having a quick look at a Brownian motion uh, as we simulate it. So what we have here, we have uh, a bunch of little blobs and they are uh, reproducing and uh, mutating uh, and moving around in space. So there's a bunch of uh, parameters that uh, uh, organize this so one of them is how they move through space so for example we can select it all the way to zero so now they've stopped moving we can increment this a little bit and they start moving around they're obviously being very fertile you see that this this blob is expanding very rapidly we can of course then make it so that they stop reproducing which means that now there's no more diversification here. We can also, for example, change the background and the colors uh, uh, on, on which they live, so to speak. Um, and so we can also change how they then interact with the environment. So what's happening from one generation to the next is that uh, uh, every time they're uh, color changes a little bit, mutates a little bit. So this is basically uh, Brownian motion, right? There's just like a random change in their color through time. And for example, we can turn that all the way off as well so that the children and the parents are exactly identical. Um, and then finally, there's a selective pressure. So what happens here is that uh, at every uh, generation, also some of the individuals uh, die and the probability of them dying is proportional to how much they differ from the uh, background so the better camouflaged you are the more likely you are to survive and we can kind of see that manifesting already here in the simulation so we started out with kind of drab looking uh, little balls um, and now what's happening, and we see this here also on the tree, so there's a bunch of lineages that um, just happen to become more blue, and that turns out to be a pretty useful innovation, so with a relatively high selective pressure and not a lot of uh, diversification, we see that basically there's um, a kind of uh, uh, non-random extinction and so over time, our blue ones uh, seem to be uh, sticking around for longer. Um, and there's a little bit of phylogenetic structure to that as well. So that here there's a little blue clade and in other spots as well. Now let's say we let them uh, diversify a bit more. Let's first do the uh, selective sweep here. So there's a whole bunch of them dying out and not having a good time at all. Um, and so let's let's let this disaster happen for a bit longer and so now when we let them diversify a bit more then over time we're going to see the tree becoming just more and more blue let's let's make them very fertile so we can see dramatic effects So here they go. Obviously, we see them being rather blue and staying within the blue zone. Um, because, of course, once they kind of drift outside that zone, like here, well, then all of a sudden they contrast a lot more with the substrate and that, that causes them to die. Now We can also change the habitat. And, of course, that is very bad news for a lot of them. Uh, so now we have a different uh, background and let's see what that does to them let's let them uh, mutate a bit more again so now here is then the game element um, it uh, the challenge is to uh, <laughs> to uh, get to uh, multiple uh, to get to some kind of divergence where we have a blue and a red clade um, and uh, the exercises for you also to make this happen. <laughs> I've never quite succeeded in getting stable populations, um, but it ought to happen once in a while. 
And here we see these ones are probably doing pretty good here in the red. Uh, let's let them mutate a little bit more. Of course, the blue ones within the blue zone uh, are going to do well, and everything else is going to be just unlucky. Um, So which part of this is, is then the Brownian motion? Uh, well, there's the movement across the canvas, which is just uh, a, a random change at every generation. Um, in principle, there's also the change in color, which is random, except so here we have introduced another term, which is the selection. So now we can see that the uh, Brownian motion is not necessarily a very good model. It just assumes that things just can go randomly in any direction. Uh, of course, that's not what's actually happening in nature. Uh, maybe like new phenotypes can be proposed, but then of course, uh, natural selection uh, starts influencing things. And uh, obviously then some things are becoming impossible just like having an infinitely large femur or whatever uh, other example phenotypes we had in the previous lectures uh, obviously cannot happen and instead we see a convergence on some optimum and for this in phylogenetic comparative analysis there's uh, a whole bunch of uh, more complex models for example one that actually has this notion of uh, one or more optima that you evolve that sort of attracts the uh, direction in which the phenotype can change. And this is things such as the ornstein uhlenbeck uh, model, which uh, has these attractors in it. Let's do another disaster. Oh my goodness, are they going to become red now? see what happens a very promising little red clade. <laughs>
So, okay, what is the take-home message from this? Uh, one thing is that there's uh, very nice disco colors and uh, that is, the code is available uh, to for you to play around with. Uh, another is that uh, we can uh, simulate Brownian motion uh, on top of a branching process and then the parameters of the branching process with uh, basically speciation and extinction as separate parameters. Um, and then another is that, uh, of course, a Brownian motion doesn't just willy-nilly go into any direction. Um, there's uh, natural selection, and then natural selection actually drives what we in fact see uh, towards uh, some optimum uh, to the detriment of whoever doesn't really fit the environment. <laughs> Here we go. We've gone from mostly blue to mostly reddish. And uh, I've now set it so that they're basically on the verge of uh, collapsing. Oh my goodness, climate change is happening or something else dramatic. And uh, here we go. The tree is being pruned until there's nobody left. <laughs>